So now if we select the ball and rotate it in local Z axis, it's acting just like the world Z axis was before because we've frozen the transforms. We can double check that, go back into the rotate tool and make sure that in fact we are in local space. And this is going to give us the ability to only rotate in one direction and do it predictably without any strange squirrely rotation artifacts. Okay, um, Maya was designed to work in a certain way so we're just making sure that we're following those guidelines by rotating in local space at all times. Okay, so there we go. We've kind of got that problem licked. And that also tells us which of these transforms are going to be relevant for the animation. We know that we're moving forward in Translate X. We know that we're moving vertically in Translate Y. Okay, hitting Z to undo. Actually, I can just type in zeros since we froze the transforms. And then Z, we know we're rotating you know, forward in Z. And none of the rest of this matters. So we can make our lives a little bit easier by not creating too many keyframes. We can just lock out the channels that we're not using. All right, so we'll restore everything back to zero. And we do want translate X, we do want translate Y, and we do want rotate Z. So I'm going to select everything and then hold down control and unselect the channels that I want to keep here. So I'm not going to lock these ones. I'm not going to lock translate X translate Y, and rotate Z. Then I can go up to the Channels menu and choose Lock Selected. So it's way down here. I can also right-click to get to the Channels menu. But I'm choosing Lock Selected. And now, boom, they're grayed out. And now, in fact, if I select my ball and I choose, for example, the Move tool, if I try to move it in Z, if I try to move it up and down in the top view, I can't do it. I can still move in X, I can still move in Y. And as far as rotate, I can't rotate in any direction except Z. Cool. So I'm going to reset everything back to zero, and I'm going to set my first keyframe on frame one. I've got 24 frames in my timeline, but I can extend the timeline out to 48. So this is what we get by default in Maya, is 48 frames. And that's 24 frames a second, so we've got two seconds worth of animation in our timeline. And I've just, once again, extended out the playback range. Just a quick explanation what these numbers are. This is the start of your total animation. This is the start of your current playback range. This is the end of your playback range and the end of your animation. So we could use the, this range slider to zoom in and out on different points in time. So we're going to zoom all the way out so that our range is equal to the animation duration. And we've got the ball selected. We've got these channels locked out. And all we need to do now is press the S key on the keyboard to create the first keyframe on frame 1. S stands for set key. As soon as I press the S key, I will see the unlocked channels have changed to orange. There's color coding going on here. Orange indicates that there is a curve attached to this channel. In other words, there's keyframe data in that channel. I could also use the Animate Set Key menu, but it's just much easier to press the S key. So we got our first keyframe on frame 1, and we'll know that because if I click and drag in the timeline, I can change my current time, and then it's clear that I've got a keyframe on frame 1. This small, narrow red line is the keyframe. You will only see it if the ball selected. So the timeline will only show you keyframes for selected objects. I've got my ball selected and my key shows up. Then I'll go down to frame 24, halfway, and I'm going to change the position. 
So I'm going to grab my move tool and I could use the camera view or any other view. Maybe I'll use my front view. Get in really close in the front view with the F key. And I don't have to position it exactly right now because I'm gonna add squash and stretch later. And that's gonna require then that I actually readjust this position later. But I'm gonna set it to just about on the ground. And I'm gonna once again press the S key. Now, if I give focus to my camera view and rewind and play back, I can see the movement. So that's the result of two keyframes. Now, if you look at this closely and if you think about it, it's actually moving too fast. It's supposed to be 24 frames a second. So it should take one second for it to get from here to there. But it seems like it's going fast. And in fact, it is going fast. And by default, Maya actually plays back the frames as quickly as your hardware is capable. So we actually have to tell Maya to play back at real time. And the best way to do that is to simply right click on the timeline and you will get a context sensitive pop-up menu. And within that you will see playback speed. The option that you want to choose is the last one in the list. It says play every frame max real time. What this means is it's going to play every frame, meaning it's not going to skip frames in a heavy scene, but it's not going to exceed the current time base, which is 24 frames per second. So this is the optimal choice in pretty much every situation. Now if I rewind and play back once again in my camera view, it's playing at the correct speed now. Excellent. Okay, and we can scrub on the timeline. We can go down to frame 48 and once again position the ball. And I'm, I'm moving it in the front view, but I'm actually watching in the camera view and trying to figure out when it's going to leave frame. I actually know that uh, when I get my lighting in here, if I want the ball to leave the frame, I probably also want its shadow to leave the frame. So I'm going to move it a little bit further than you might think I would need to kind of way out there. And let's go to the front view and dolly back a little bit just to get a sense of where things are, maybe in the perspective view too. And if that's where we want the ball to be on frame 48, I'll press the S key once again to create the third keyframe. And if I scrub or play back in different viewports, I can see the motion. So let's concentrate on the camera view. So I'll select that. So as you'll see, of course, this is not a very convincing bounce. There's a couple things wrong with it. Obviously, first of all, it's moving very slowly. And second of all, it's kind of arcing through the space. And if we go to our front view, rewind and play that back, you'll see we're getting a sort of, you know, soft, smooth arc. But what we really want is a bounce. You want to see the ball come up and down, hit the ground, and rebound.